everyone, it's Javo, and today I'm going to be showing you how I made cards from my friends. So I had this idea for a while now since I personally love making cards for people, it's one of my favorite things to do. I've uh, actually never bought a card for any of my friends for birthdays, Christmas, Valentine's Day, just because you can make it at home for free. As long as you have paper and a pencil, then you can make a really nice personalized card and it doesn't cost any money, so that's a win. During this time especially, when we're social distancing and we're not able to physically be with our friends or hang out, I think it's it's a tough time for everybody. Although we have Zoom calls and Skype and you're able to text people and video chat, I feel like it's not the exact same as if you were to physically be there with them. So I thought that creating cards for them would be a great idea to just give them a tangible way to show them how much I care about them and how much I appreciate them and miss them. So I'm just gonna show you how I do that. So first, I started with creating envelopes. Obviously, you can buy envelopes, or if you have them on hand, just use those. I personally didn't, so I used an old envelope and used it as a template um, to create my own envelopes. So I'll show you how to do that right now. So I just started with a regular envelope, and then I just opened it up, ripped it up, and then I got a regular scrapbook paper, just the standard square one, flipped it over, and then put the template on top, and you just trace around it. Nice trick is just to line up one of the edges to the paper, just make sure you don't have to cut an extra side. And then you just get a template, like this. And from there you fold in all the sides, and then you take a glue stick, and you just glue down a bottom triangle, glue it together, and then there you go. You just have some really cute DIY envelopes. So for materials, everyone's going to be a little bit different, it just depends on what you have on hand. I personally like to paint and draw, so I have a lot of random art stuff, but just a pencil and paper and pen is fine. I start with a pencil and eraser, basics, and I also have a set of Prismacolor Color Erase pencils. So they're like pencil crayons, but they have an eraser at the end. They don't perfectly erase, but it's a little bit easier to erase than regular color pencil, and I like to use this pencil as the basic sketch before I paint. And for paint, I like to use gouache. Gouache is like a mix between watercolor and acrylic paint. It's nice because you can get a thick color payoff, but you can also water it down to make it a little bit lighter. So similar to watercolor, but color payoff is like acrylic. I also like to use markers. So I have Copic markers, but you can use like any kind of marker. I like to use these when I have more basic designs that don't require a lot of color mixing or intense, intricate stuff. So this is just a fun way to add some color. Another material I use are these Posca Pen paint markers. They're basically markers, but instead of regular ink, they have paint in them. I like to use these for when I have a more simple design that only requires blocks of color. So for example, flowers or regular lettering is a really nice way to use these markers. It's easier to use than paint, but more vibrant than just regular markers. I also have a brush pen. This is the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. It's like a really nice Japanese brush pen that has ink inside of it. You can create really dynamic lines from thick to thin. You can do some really nice calligraphy. So a really easy trick to make any kind of lettering look more interesting is on your downstroke, make it a bit thicker, and then on your upstrokes, make it thinner. And that's like a really easy trick to make any kind of word more fancy. And for paper, I just use this regular cardstock. Any kind of paper works, even if you have like old scrapbook paper or like regular printer paper, that works too. Just whatever you have on hand. So after I create all the envelopes, I measure out and cut out the cards to the dimensions of the envelope, and then I start the sketching process. So for every card I make, I usually sketch out the design I want, and I use a Strathmore sketchbook. This is where I put all my basic sketches in general. Depending on the person, I'll have a few ideas for what I want. It's just a good way to get your ideas out and plan out the card before you start painting. After you finish all your sketches, then you can start the actual card making. Time for the actual card making, yay! So the first card I made was for my friend Ryan, and Ryan loves birds, he's like obsessed with them. He actually did a research project on them for the summer, so he has a huge understanding about them. He also looks up animal videos for fun, like those National Geographic videos. So yeah, he's a huge bird nerd. I decided to make a bird painting for him. 
I just base it off of a zebra finch. So this is what I'm painting. Super simple and I use gouache for the whole thing. So the next card is for my boyfriend, Jeremy. I actually struggled a lot with figuring out what idea I wanted to make for his card. I've made a lot of cards for him, just from birthdays and Valentine's Day gifts and stuff, so I was really stumped. I had no idea what to do, but after much consideration, I decided to do a animal restaurant theme. So animal restaurant is a phone game that you can download, and it's like a really cute game. You just run a restaurant with a bunch of animals that come in, you buy food. It's really cute. Highly recommend it if you want something chill to do. I decided to paint the cat waiter and then there's this like cat washer guy he just like kind of picks up all the fish that the customers leave I love cats and I love painting them I thought it'd be a cute idea Jeremy is also obsessed with League of Legends like he plays every night and by night I mean he literally plays from I want to say like 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. on the regular especially right now since we literally have nothing else to do I painted a little Poro on top of the cat's head. You know, the first time I painted the Poro, the face was really bad, like, oh my god, like, look at that derp face. It's it's really derp, but don't worry, I fixed it later. So, yeah, and I wanted to make, like, fall-themed colors. More muted, but also bright. And I wanted to create a really cute and uh, cheerful kind of composition. The reason why there's random strawberries is that I was originally going to have the cat hold strawberry cheesecake since that's Jeremy's favorite cake, but then I forgot to do that, obviously. <laughs> I just drew the cups that are in the game. But yeah, the strawberries are just there, you know, who doesn't love strawberries? <laughs> The next card was for my friend Christina, and Christina has two things that define her personality. Plants and Gudetama. This girl loves Gudetama. She's also obsessed with plants, and like, when I mean obsessed, I mean her entire room is like a plant sanctuary. You know how you pay money to go to plant sanctuaries? And like, they take care of these rare plants, and it's really beautiful, peaceful, and serene. That's literally what her room is. It's like the most peaceful and beautiful room ever. So I wanted to mix the two. I have Gudetama here, just being his little old lazy self. And then I have some leaves in the background. This is a nice and simple one. I was kind of burnt out from the other two cards. So I decided to make a little bit of a simpler design in this one, but I still think it turned out really cute. So my friend Aji loves books and penguins. She's a huge reader. She's read so many books. I think her goal was to read like a book every month or something or two books every month, something crazy like that. And she just loves reading. And her favorite color was blue. So her card was pretty much a no brainer. I painted a really cute penguin reading. Aji is one of my closest friends. I think I've known her the longest out of everyone. We've been friends since grade seven. And she's pretty much like a second sister to me. She's a lot more logical and thinks with her head a lot more than I do. I'm more rash and I usually just do things without thinking, so I like to consult her whenever I have project ideas, just to make sure I have a voice of reason. Pro tip for any card making, sparkles and random accents of color make anything more interesting. So if you want to spaz up a little blank area, it's like a nice touch and they're really simple. So yeah. Hers is really cute and I had a fun time making it.
So this card was from my friend Savani. And Savani is like the most wholesome person I've ever met. She's so nice. She is just so in touch with nature and herself. She's just one of the nicest people I've ever met. So for this card, I wanted to make something really simple, a little bit more aesthetic. So I just did a nice sunflower in the middle and then some flowers to decorate the sides. I found it to be a little bit plain, so later on I added a little bit more detail, but you'll see that at the end. Here I'm using the Posca pens instead of the paint because I found it to be a little bit easier to use than paint since the flowers were so small and it wasn't super complicated. And now for my friend Megan. Megan is this really cute Christian girl. She's so sweet. And she's probably like the nicest girl I've ever met in my life. She's so kind. She's also really funny. And I just love her. So I decided to create this simple card with the quote, live, laugh, love, because Megan is a huge fan of cheesy quotes. So, you know, I thought it'd be a great idea to put that on a card and embellish it with some flowers and colors. I used Copics and the Pentel brush pen to create the calligraphy, and I thought it turned out really nice. So this is a nice, simple idea. You can actually replace it with any quote, and just to make it more interesting, you can try and change the caps. So if one word is all lowercase, make the next word all uppercase, or mix and match, or make one word a lot smaller like it did with the lib, and then the next word a lot bigger. Just adding contrasting elements to the words can make a simple quote look more substantial. The next card is my friend Emad. Woo, Emad. So Emad is actually Jeremy's friend that we met at a friend's birthday party and he was like the first new friend I'd made in a long time. So that was super fun. We talk about a lot of random stuff and we send each other like cute dog videos or just cute things. So I wanted to make a cute card for him. He's really into Animal Crossing right now. I mean, who isn't <laughs> right now? So hopping on that trend. So I painted Isabel in an admin uniform, but a little bit of like a schoolgirl touch with a little ribbon bow and she's just so cute. And I added some flowers and some little accents beside her in the background just to make it a little bit more spicy. I also used a more muted color scheme. I know Animal Crossing has a lot more bright colors, but for my personal style, I love muted colors. So that's what I went with here. I think it turned out really cute. For my friend Jess, I drew a giant Poro because just like Jeremy, she loves League of Legends. But not just League of Legends, she also loves playing mobile games. She has a billion games downloaded on her phone, and she's a huge gamer. Literally this one time, we were planning to go out, and she literally told me that she couldn't because she had a gaming tournament to attend. I used Copic markers because Poros are pretty simple to draw, and they're actually white, I think? Unless I'm wrong, these will come at me, but I'm pretty sure they're white or they're light blue. I drew this one white, and I just add some accents with colors, so didn't really need anything intense. And the last card I made was for my friend Carmen. She just loves cute things and Shiba Inus especially, so I modeled this Shiba after a sticker I saw on Instagram 
and that dog flower meme where like the like the dog is inside the flower and it's like super cute and wholesome so that's what i went for here and then i painted my traditional sparkles and flowers to decorate the edges and i thought it was just pretty cute So here are the final cards, woo! Oh my gosh, it took me two and a half days to paint all of them. I kind of wanted to pull my hair out, but it's worth it for your friends. After I finished making all the cards, I just packaged them all into their envelopes and then I decorated each envelope with stickers. I have a lot of stickers. A little bit of a sticker problem. <laughs> so I thought it'd be a good time to use them up. I decorate with them, add some sparkles and some nice like marker details, stamp them, and then send them off in the mail. Finally all done. Oh my gosh. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it inspired you to do something nice for your friends and family. I know it's a really difficult time for everybody and I really want to take this time to thank all the frontline workers and healthcare workers for all the hard work you're putting into it. You guys are really the backbone of the entire world right now. We're all counting on you and we all appreciate you so much for what you do. Thank you so much. And I also wanted to do this to remind people that you guys can still stay connected in little ways. Even if that means FaceTiming a friend for 10 minutes, and uh, what I like to do is go on like virtual dates with my friends, my boyfriend, so sometimes we'll FaceTime and we'll paint with each other, or I did this with my friend where we FaceTimed each other while we watched a new anime, so that was pretty fun. This is cheesy, but social distancing does not mean not socializing. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Oh, that's adorable. So many stickers. <laughs>